There are nearly 8,300 books in the series, Images of America. Joining us today on Newsmakers is Lynn Tatum, the author of Images of America, McDonald County. Thanks for joining us, Lynn. Um, so tell us what this book is, what's, what's it about? It's about uh, the history of McDonald County for the first 100 years or so. And by the way, I am not by any means the sole author right. of this book. <laughs> Um, when I went to write the acknowledgments, I think there were about 100 people wow. that had their fingers in this book. And um, I was a main writer, and I tried to bring it all together. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it took a village oh. to write this book. And it's hard, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's quite the process. And we don't have any paid staff, and none of us um, that worked on the book are professionals at all. So it was a learning process, but it was um, a labor of pain, of uh, not only pain, but of uh, joy. Right. We uh, mostly love, a love of the history of McDonald County. It's so rich and so unique in the Ozark culture mm -hmm. that uh, when I came to McDonald County, I thought, this is so interesting that the values that under, under create the foundation for McDonald County are so beautiful mm -hmm. and, and the culture is so unique that I just became mesmerized by McDonald County. And so it was a labor of love to um, produce uh, finally this pictorial book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you got involved because you're on the Historical Society, is that right? Is yes. that how you got involved? Yes, yes. Um, and talk about the process of putting together the pictures or gathering the pictures. How does that even happen or start? Yeah, it, it was about a year-long process. We had the vision of, of putting out a picture book that would tell about this unique culture in McDonald County. And we found, we have probably two dozen books on the history of McDonald County, but we didn't have a book that told the history through pictures. Mm -hmm. And so we were looking for um, um, producing, the Historical Society was looking to produce such a book and found this Images of America series mm -hmm. and uh, found that this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted um, quality pictures on quality paper and all of their Images of America stories are written by local authors and we had the, the archives that had the photos, mm. and we had people on our board and our, in, within our membership who had the knowledge. And so we contacted Arcadia, and they said, well, write an application. I don't think that they'd ever heard of McDonald County. Wow. But, and there is only one McDonald County in all of the United States. It's ours. Really? Yes. Yeah, because yes. there are so many Jasper counties yes, and Newton yes, counties. Yes. but. Yes, I didn't know that. There's only one. And um, we wrote the application and found that we were accepted. And so we signed the contract a year ago, October. Wow. And that was the beginning of a process yeah. that we thought would <laughs> not be as difficult and laborious as it was. Yeah. But it's kind of like giving birth to a child. It's, <laughs> like, it takes time yep. <laughs> and uh, some pain and sweat. Right. Um, but when it came out, it, we decided right away it was worth all of our efforts. And we love it. And we think it's, it's an exciting book. And it, it does speak to people who um, have, um, that are visual. We found in developing the museum exhibits that some people learn mm -hmm. through looking at pictures. Right. And some pictures, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. I mean, it tells the story in its own unique way. And so um, we gathered the pictures. And I think the first thing that we did was sit down and decide what stories do we want to mm -hmm. tell? What's unique? What's different about McDonald County? what makes this rich culture uh, in fact we have one my favorite chapter is called the culture of caring caring oh. about god country family neighbor mm -hmm. and caring about hard work right that it's not just the history of the county but it's the values that under under underlie all this history mm -hmm. that i i found so rich and so wonderful values that I'm afraid I've been lost uh, 
frequently in our modern day culture, our yeah. throwaway culture, mm -hmm. where they were they were isolated in these hills and they fixed things rather than throw, throw them <laughs> right. Out. So we we divided the book into eight themes. And that was the first step. And then the second step was to find the pictures that would tell the stories within those themes. Yeah, how do you find all, like, there's how many pages in that? There's, there's all... 127 pages, wow. and there's probably 200 pictures. Wow, yes. how do you find all those? Yes. Well, thankfully, <laughs> McDonald County has had a strong historical society since 1963. Mm -hmm. And they started collecting pictures. And in between 2000 and 2010, they put them all on, on uh, they scanned them mm -hmm. and put them on a digital file. Oh. So when I came into historical society, I had come from San Antonio and Chicago area and Michigan, right. and I had to learn mm -hmm. about this beautiful history that I was discovering because I was living here. But the president at the time handed me eight discs, eight discs. Each disc had a thousand pictures on it. Oh my. So I learned the history of McDonald County through 8,000 photos wow. and I was a part of a team that developed the museum. So I spent three months, morning, noon, and night, mm -hmm. um, just soaking up all this history through pictures. Mm -hmm. So we had that as our base. And that was because since 1963, they've been collecting all these pictures and organizing them. And then since uh, 2012, we've collected pictures. And then when we started writing the book and asking people for pictures, we received even more pictures. Gosh. And Bobby, we hit um, uh, the mother load when we found Vance Randolph's uh, collection of pictures mm. he took. Um, that are being saved at the College of the Ozarks in Branson. Oh. And um, he is an author of Ozark culture, wrote several books, and he came in the 1920s to live in Pineville. He bought a log cabin. Wow. He stayed in Pineville. He stayed in McDonald County and wrote about the Ozark culture. And he had a wonderful camera. <laughs> that, that always helps. <laughs> and he took pictures and the College of the Ozarks received his collection. Wow. And they gave us permission. So the book has many photos that people in McDonald County and most people here have never seen because they're from the Vance Randolph collection. That's incredible. And how do pictures like that survive? Like you said 1920, so, and some of them are from the 1800s. Yes, yes. And how do they survive? Yes, that, that is a good question. I've learned a lot about that. Um, for one thing, the older cameras uh, took very good pictures, mm -hmm. actually, that that stayed preserved if people took care of them. Yeah. My grandma has a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. That were taken yeah. way, way, way back when. And I think there's one picture in here that was accepted that was taken by a present-day camera. And that is the picture of the the last picture in the book that talks about our headquarters on a, uh, that is um, an old home that mm -hmm. we've restored in uh, Pineville that is the headquarters for the Historical Society. But mm -hmm. all of the pictures are historic pictures. I, I submitted some some that I took from a cell phone that were of old buildings mm -hmm. or of old cars. Mm -hmm. They were not, because of the technical quality, right. they weren't acceptable. Wow. Um, their standards for quality photos eliminated 95% of the pictures that we had scanned because they were oh. not scanned in TIFF. They were not scanned at the right dimension and resolution. And we didn't have the originals wow. because we gave originals back to people as they gave us pictures. We scanned them and gave them back. Yeah. But who knew we were going to write a book and need all these high resolutions and so <laughs> forth. So pictures have survived because of the quality of the cameras mm -hmm. and the importance they are to people's lives, like sure. your grandmother. Right. People who cherish them mm -hmm. and saved them and then shared them with us. Yeah. And they used to write on the back of pictures, yes. the names and the dates. Yes. And so you always know when you look at it, who it is. Yes. Yes. And I mean, God forbid they didn't do that because then, you know, 
two, yeah. three generations, they're like, who's that? I, I don't know. know. I know. And there were there were some pictures where we where we had people that we we knew, but we mm -hmm. had some people we didn't know. Yeah. And so that research went on throughout the writing phase of, okay, let's contact this family member in California. They're now living in California or they're living in New York or Massachusetts. And mm -hmm. we had people from all over the United States who grew up in McDonald County helping us with this book and helping us identify people. Right. Because we wanted, <clears throat> we didn't, we weren't entirely successful, but we tried to use accurate names. Oh, right. And interesting, Bobby, we had a difficult time finding the first names of women because really? they were listed in those old photographs and Mrs. as Mrs. Yep. Walter Smith. Yep. And we and the uh, Arcadia wanted that that female name. That, right. And a lot of times we couldn't find it. Isn't that so telling about yeah. the times back then versus yeah. now? Yeah. Well, talk about your connection to the area. So you. Are, you have an education background right. in community college, you said? Right, right. I worked in community colleges all my life. I was a vice president for student services in three community colleges and actually had a history minor in school. But then I fell in love with Jim Tatum, who lived in McDonald County and knew that he, w he ran a business. And marriage meant I would be moving to McDonald County. And mm. frankly... I, I was a little fearful. I oh, was yeah. living in San Antonio. Huge and, difference. And people were saying, you know where you're moving? <laughs> Culture <maybe?"> shock. <laughs> <laughs> what I found was this gorgeous, beautiful paradise. I had lived in northern Michigan. I lived in southern Texas. The weather was oh, yeah. perfect to begin mm -hmm. with. We have 15 acres in this beautiful, wooded, hilly meadow in the middle. So it's and, green and lush. Oh, it's gorgeous here and of course my husband was fourth generation uh, McDonald County. His great great grandfather moved here in, in moved there in 1840 and then his grandfather started the general store in Anderson and then his father was prosecuting attorney uh, from McDonald County wow. and a state legislator for McDonald County. And then Jim um, went to West Point, and he went to Korean War, and he got wounded in the war. He came back to Anderson to raise his family. Mm -hmm. So he was running Tatum Motors. So for the first 12 years that I lived with, with Jim, we got married in 2000, I thought everyone loved McDonald County <laughs> and thought highly of McDonald <laughs> County because he did yeah. and I did. And then all of a sudden I found out that wasn't always true. No. That um, people, he, Jim was proud to be hillbilly. Right. <laughs> he was, he, he, he knew that this underlying value system right. of this Ozark culture was family, love of family, mm -hmm. love of service to neighbors, help your neighbors, help other people, and was hard work. I mean, he at 85 years old, he left to work every morning at six o'clock. He didn't return until six at night. He worked seven. He worked six days a week. Wow. And and so there was a there was a culture of caring about family, service, um, God, country that I think is missing, frankly. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with all of that. Not only I fell in love with not only the history but with the value system that was underneath all of mm -hmm. that history. And so I was eager to be part of the historical society to preserve and celebrate this rich and unique history and to, um, and to honor it and to talk to people about mm -hmm. it and to educate them. And to, uh, we have all the fourth graders come through the museum and I want every fourth grader in McDonald County to leave the museum and every person who reads this book to leave the book thinking, wow, this is a great county. This is a beautiful county of hardworking people. And yes, we have our faults and we have our poverty. Everybody does. But the people are rich in, in their life because Thanksgiving, if you go to any th home for Thanksgiving dinner in McDonald County, you will see 40 people. Oh, yeah, easily, easily. And 
they're all crammed into small headquarters, small <laughs> kitchens, small, but they, they love one another and take care of one another. Mm -hmm. I I like that. I don't, I don't blame you. I would, too. Um, and a few of the pictures show movie stars on location. Yes. Um, talk about yes. the movies that were made. And, yes. And the, uh, Bell Star, the Hollywood company, shot some of the, of the uh, scenes from that movie in McDonald County because mm -hmm. it's so picturesque. But the movie Jesse James that was made by 20th Century Fox in 1938, all of the shots were McDonald County. Wow. And they wanted to shoot in Liberty. And the director, Henry King, flew over Liberty and decided it was too commercial. This was 1938, and they wanted something that looked like 1880. Oh, I got gotcha. you. And so he got in his plane and he flew over Missouri. And he looked down on McDonald County and found exactly what he wanted. Wow. He found the bluffs, he found the rivers, he found the cliffs, he found the old-fashioned uh, um, courthouse and the square he wanted to shoot in. He saw the old farmhouses. And so they shot uh, the film in 1938 on location, which was different. Mm -hmm. Up until 1938, they were doing them in Hollywood. Right. And on a movie so set. they shot on location and they mm -hmm. shot it in Technicolor. Now, that 1938 movie probably would have won some awards, but it was the same year that The Wizard of Oz came yep. out, the same year that Gone with the Wind came out. Yep. But it had leading stars. It had um, Tyrone Power, it had Randall Scott, right. Henry Fonda. It had the leading Hollywood stars in it, and it was shot in Technicolor. It is, it's a beautiful family film, yeah. if you can get it. 1938 movie, Jesse James. Wow. And, um, yeah, some of the, of the um, uh, photographs were shot right in our courthouse and right on our square. And the reason now in McDonald County, we have Jesse James Days. Mm -hmm. We have a Jesse James Road. And the reason we celebrate it is because you think of the year. <clears throat> what was going on in 1938? The Depression. Yep. There was so much poverty in McDonald County and all over. And when Hollywood came to town, they hired horses. They hired buggies. They built, they built the Dixie Bell Saloon. They bought lumber. They hired um, all kinds of people to do all kinds of things. And you think back in 1938, too, there was no TV. Mm -hmm. What people did was go to the movies. Right. And so thousands of people came to McDonald County to watch the filming. We have pictures of hundreds and thousands of people who were swarmed around the movie set. Wow. So what did the kids do? They parked their cars. Mm -hmm. They sold them sodas. They, um, they, we had to feed them. We had to house them. Mm -hmm. It was an economic boon, and so at a time when people had yeah, nothing. At a time when they had nothing. That's so incredible. It, 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 there's so many fond memories, uh, and we have the the movie picture. Well, and most people these days they just take pictures on their phones. Yes. Oh, yeah. And they rarely get them printed. Right. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I bet if you pulled a group of the kids here at Southern, yeah. none of them have printed photos, no. or very few. Yes. How do we, you know, impart on them the, you know, the necessity of printing photos and keeping the memories? That that phone's going <clears> to <throat> go away. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, that that's a good question, and I'm not sure how to answer it because I'm not in the skin of a young person. Right. But I totally understand what you're talking about. Yeah. I gave my grandnephew uh, a photo that I had printed of his father, you know, like 10 or 15 years ago, and I handed it to him. And you know what he did, Bobby? He picked up the picture. <laughs> he picked up the picture, and he rolled it over. I'm going like, why is he looking at the bank? Of it? I don't think he ever had seen a photograph taken with a cell phone ever printed out. Wow. <laughs> Strange. And that's when I realized that the young people don't print their pictures. Yeah. So I don't know, except that still, they share pictures, mm -hmm. they love pictures, and... Oh yeah, the phone is all about the pictures, the cameras. That's that right. They can it, take... And share know. them. Yeah. And, uh, but 
So I think they know that pictures can, it can say more than words. Mm -hmm. And um, so by saving the, the older pictures, they can get a sense of what went before them. Now, some young people have no interest in their ancestors <laughs> right. and, and uh, no interest right now. But someday, right. someday, we, we try to recruit young people into our organization, but sometimes it takes a little gray hair yeah. to slow down enough to realize that who came before us and what came before us and where we were brought up had a lot to do with who we are, mm -hmm. who we are. So uh, in time. Yeah, and family connection, I think, is a big thing, too. Like you, you're connected to your family, and if, there's, if the kids are connected with their grandparents and you know, they're, they're given that, that opportunity to learn from them, you know, because if, if we don't know our history, we're doomed to repeat it, yes. is the saying. Yes. And so pictures seem like a, an optimal way to get to them. That's right, and to share about their grandparents and part of who they are right. is because of their grandparents mm -hmm. and they will learn that over time. I have a granddaughter now visiting me and, and she's unusual I think as a 23 <laughs> year old. She, she loves uh, history mm -hmm. and she loves hearing my stories about my childhood and her mother's stories about her childhood because she knows that, that is part of who she is mm -hmm. as a person. She understands that concept. And I think that young people will grow into that if they're not into it already. Well, and talk about the McDonald County H Historical Society. You're a member and you said you like to recruit younger people. How many members yes. do you have? Yes, yes. We have, thank you for asking because I'm real proud of the organization. I think it's a great organization. We have uh, 230 members. Wow from all over the United States. The people from McDonald County that grew up here know that it's unique, mm -hmm. and especially if they've moved away. They know it's unique, and they love to help us preserve this, mm -hmm. this precious history, this very rich and unique history. So um, they, are, they, re, they are members. It only costs $15 every year mm -hmm. to be a member. So. They are members, and we have um, about 80 active volunteers. We have um, 16 members on our board. We meet once a month. The board meets once a month, and everybody on the board has a job. We have no paid employees, and we own three buildings, and we wow. have to insure them and maintain them mm -hmm. and keep them up, and we are not tax-based. There is no government agency right. that gives us money. We're a 501c3, so we not only have to insure, maintain, create, and, and create interesting things to happen in all of these buildings, but we have to, um, we have to raise the money sure. to do it. Do you get the, any proceeds or the proceeds from the sell, sale of the book? If you buy it from us, right? If you buy oh, the I book gotcha. mm -hmm. from us, and it's all it's on Amazon and it's on it's on. But if the book is purchased from the historical society, a hundred percent of it will go back to preserving the buildings. Okay, because local people gave us the money for the inventory. I gotcha. So they have to go to your website or call you. Yes. Okay. Yes. And we'll put those that number great, in. Great. The, they can buy on the, the website. Mm -hmm. They can buy by PayPal, and they can get it. Um, yeah, I think you're going to put it out there. They can get it in several uh, locations throughout McDonald County. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's it's a fundraiser. It, well, that's we didn't, good. We didn't write it as a fundraiser, sure. but but 100 percent of the money goes back into insurance and mm -hmm. preservation. And how do you get the younger generation interested or to join? That's a very good question, Bobby. <laughs> and um, we try to recruit younger board members too. Now, mm -hmm. younger, but I mean, fifties and sixties. Right. You know, I'm eighty, so I think <laughs> that that's younger, and that is younger. But um, and we do have some board members that are in their fifties and sixties mm -hmm. that are working full time, but yet take time out to come to our board meetings and be active. But um, we give us first of all, we give a scholarship, mm -hmm. a high school scholarship, a thousand dollar scholarship, 
to someone who's interested in history, hoping that someday they'll come back right. and, they'll, and they'll help us out. We bring all the fourth graders through. Uh, McDonald County Public Schools have supported that. Uh, we've had a little lapse in that because of COVID. Sure. But um, so um, I think uh, getting the little ones in the museum mm -hmm. is very important to us. In fact, um, we're getting the little, little ones uh, through to see Mrs. Claus um, next Saturday. Nice. Um, and we're always happy to get the little ones through that way. And we are talking about, and the board hasn't even um, heard about this yet, but we are going to be talking about a proposal to put a student um, on our board. Oh, wow. To put a, a high school student on our board um, so that we can um, learn from them. Yeah and how to reach the younger people. Well, and that was, that's my other question. It's, do you think there, there are still new things in our history to discover? Oh my, yes. Oh my, It's yes. not all been written. Oh my, yes. I was so excited the other day because <clears throat> there's a picture in here of an old fashioned hearse. Oh. It's wooden, it's drawn by horses, and it was approved to put in the book kind of at the last minute because my cell phone pictures of an old hearse <laughs> were unacceptable. So I had this, this picture of a, of a wooden hearse. The other day I blew it up in a PowerPoint presentation because we're going around doing book signings. And when I blew it up, I thought, those are soldiers walking in front of this wooden hearse. Oh. And I knew the name of the man I knew it was Anderson, I knew his name was John Madden, and I knew that it was Anderson, but I didn't know anything about the date. And I, but, I, but I saw old cars, and the, and the hearse was drawn mm -hmm. by horses, so I knew maybe 1920-ish. When I blew it up, I decided to go to Google and look up John Madden and uh, Anderson, and I found that he was a casualty of World War I. Wow. I just found that out. And that Pershing listed him in a document that was on Google uh, as a casualty from Anderson, John Madden. I got so excited, I had to call all the other <laughs> authors, and I said, I just learned something new yeah. about one of the pictures in the book. And isn't it funny how new technology helps with the old? There you go. And, and finding all of this information. There you go. And so, yes, it's I think like a, there's... like a marriage of the two. Right. There's so much more to discover. Yeah, and it's funny that your pictures, taken with a current, probably really great camera, oh, yeah. aren't good enough. No, they weren't. They were unacceptable. In fact, we had to substitute probably 12 pictures at the end. Wow. Between September 15th and October 15th, we were hunting for about 15 pictures that were, uh, they weren't taken by cell phones, but they were, uh, we thought pretty high quality, but they were unacceptable. Their, their standards, mm -hmm. Arcadia standards are high. Yeah. So. Uh, and that's a good thing. Yeah. We're very happy with the quality of the, how they turned out and the quality of the, of the paper. Mm -hmm. And um, the final product, we're, we're very pleased with. So what are you gonna do now that you're, you're, you're <laughs> I guess, done, if you will? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in, we're <coughs> as, uh, the reason I'm here today is, mm -hmm. to, is to start marketing. Mm -hmm. So we have this marketing plan and we're using Facebook. We're putting pictures on our Facebook uh, page, which is, which is McDonald County Historical Society. We're, we're um, telling people where they can buy the book and, and doing book signings. And so that's what we're into right now. But um, first of the year. It'd be a great present, a Christmas yeah. present. Oh. Great, yes, yeah. we have some people who buy six or seven of wow. them for all their families throughout. So it's, um, oh yeah, I think it's a great Christmas gift. And I, the fact that it came out now, yeah. we're, we couldn't be more pleased. Yeah, and you're clearly passionate about history. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I always have been. And this was an opportunity to find a way to share it. Yeah, yeah it was well, my pleasure. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. Well, thanks for and having so me. And so you can get a copy of Images of America, McDonald County, from the Historical Society um, that will help with their fundraising. This is Newsmakers on KGCS-TV from the Ruth Colpin Studios here at Missouri Southern State University, and I'm Bobby Potroff. We'll see you again soon.